We're in the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 22 and 23. The Bible says, Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? The treasures of the snow. Interesting portion of scripture there. The Bible talks about the treasures of the snow, and it's that God sends them in a time of war and battle. Well, if you know anything at all about the military, if you're a veteran or if you're currently in the military or whatever, uh, most soldiers do not get any kind of a northern winter training, sort of a specialized training when you go and you get uh, the cold environment training. Um, I think, uh, I can't remember the name of the fort. There's one in um, New York State. We used to drive past it when we were moving here to Maine and they do some of the cold winter training. My wife was telling me about that. She was never active component, so she didn't go through the northern training. But uh, fighting in the north presents a lot of challenges. Uh, living in the north presents a lot of challenges. But uh, when you get to understand it, and um, you actually see that there's safety, there's a peace that comes from being in the north, because there's a lot of people a lot of bad characters that uh, they don't want to be around a place like this. And I feel a lot safer in the north as a result of that. But I want to read here from my little miniature King James Bible some more verses about snow. It says, He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. This is Psalm 147 verse 15. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. Hmm. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. Very interesting, kind of like the, the spring melt that comes. And um, again, if you've never experienced this, if you've moved down south and whatever else, if you're of European ancestry, you know, your ancestors, this is your natural habitat, your natural state. And, um, and I think a lot of people have been uh, given into a lot of the propaganda out there about that winter's this terrible time and, oh boy, you know, it's so cold and, oh man, and, you know, I see people a lot and they'll talk about, oh, I'm so glad I don't live in the north and, and everything, and I think, <laughs> okay. But uh, I've seen in the comments a couple of times now, people have said, uh, Brother Brian, what do you think about this issue of, there are people that say that eventually white people will move to the north because of all the bad things happening in America. What do you think about that, brother? Well, I don't really know where that came from, but uh, it is an interesting theory, interesting concept. Um, because up here, I feel safe. Um, you know, like I was saying, I, I mean, there's a lot of, of things down south, a lot of criminals and things. And if you're going to rob a place or, you know, stake a place out or whatever else where you, you're thinking that you can wait till they're not home, or it's going to be really hard to do that when it's sub-zero. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, when you walk onto a property, um, you end up leaving your tracks if it's snow out. So they can tell where you came from and you know, uh, what, where you went and whatever else. They can, they can see where you, you know, what you did essentially with your tracks. And um, show you some tracks coming up here. I can see some up ahead. Probably the, there's a moose back in here. Last time I came back through here. I don't know how fresh these tracks are going to be, but I'll just, let me spin the camera around here very bright out right now so please forgive me of course there's Luther running along sniffing the tracks yeah these are older tracks you can tell but uh, you can see animal tracks all around so definitely makes for an interesting um, situation but uh, I don't know it's just kind of an interesting thing as thinking about this this morning and just thinking of how much um, how much I love the snow how much I love the cold and uh, the thing that marks the church in the New Testament 
the reason why, one of the, the big reasons why I'm against church buildings is because the church of Jesus Christ is actually supposed to be movable. It's actually supposed to be a mobile church. And um, that means it's not a building. The church in the New Testament, every reference is to the people, not the building. And that's very important because the church has, through most of its history, been very persecuted and had a lot of people um, hunting down Christians, a lot of people that did horrible things to Christians. And the church has to move. The church is scattered abroad throughout all Asia one time you read. And Paul is going and he's, he's persecuting the, the Christians, the church, and they're, they're moving and, and changing and going different places. This idea of a church building where you meet every week from Sunday, Sunday morning 9 to 12 is completely foreign to the pages of the New Testament. They didn't meet on the first day of the week, which would have been Sunday. You can look that up. They did. It wasn't some kind of thing where they kept the Sabbath day. That's nonsense. Um, you can worship on the Sabbath day. You can worship on a Sunday. You can worship Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever. Um, there's no uh, prescribed thou shalt worship only on Sunday from 9 to 12 or something. And uh, that's not the mark of the beast like the dippy uh, founder of the Seventh-day Adventist came up with. That's a lot of nonsense. Um, but getting back to what I was saying here, um, I think it's an important thing to always keep in mind the concept of, of where should I be? Where does God want me to be? Not my will, but thine be done. And um, you say, what about you, Brother Brian? What if God's call God calls you down to live in the southern part of the United States? Well, I'd have to be really, really sure that he wants that. And I'd have to question him quite a bit on that because no offense to anybody who lives down south, but uh, I can't stand the heat. You say, you can't take the heat. Well, that's exactly it. I can't take the heat. Um, it was a little bit below zero this morning. And uh, <clears throat> right now it's probably in the teens somewhere. I feel fine. I feel great. Not wearing gloves. I'm not freezing. Your body gets used to it. For those of you that live in the south, you think, oh boy, I just couldn't handle it. You know, it gets down to 50 degrees and I think I'm freezing. I couldn't handle, you know, in the walk around in the teens out there in the snow like this. Um, you might be surprised once you get used to it. You know, when I first moved to Maine, I remember uh, it was kind of a thing of, I didn't know how long winter lasted or anything. We moved in January of 2014. So we recently just passed our 10th anniversary, so to speak, of being in Maine. And uh, so I had no idea how long does winter last here or whatever. We had a lot of snow that year. Didn't, don't have much this year. But, um, and I just kind of, you know, I was busy with the ministry. We were busy with getting all the paperwork done and everything else, you know, moving to a new state, all the things you have to go through and change your driver's license and vehicle stuff and, you know, all the things. And um, so I stayed in a lot uh, the first winter and spring came, you know, we went through and we got ready for the next winter. and. And uh, we didn't have heat the first winter either, other than just little electric heaters in, in each individual room that we were in. Rough going through that. Uh, no running water either. So, <laughs> interesting time. Um, but, you know, we got through it. Next winter I was more ready for the, for the cold that was coming and had a wood pellet stove and, you know, it was better getting through that winter. We had Oliver at that point in time as well. He was born in September of that year, 2014, I'm saying. And so, you know, we had a better year. And each year I got a little bit stronger, a little bit better with um, going through winter. And then it was, you know, let's go snowshoeing and let's go out snowmobiling and let's, and you start to actually enjoy the winter. Then you look forward to it. And now it's to the point where I get really sad when I see the snow go away. I think, oh man, here comes summer again. Here comes the black flies and the mosquitoes and all the other bugs. And hopefully it won't hit 90 degrees again this summer coming up. Our first year here, it was not that hot. It only barely, it might've gotten to 80 degrees or something, I think once or twice. 
usually it was down in the 60s and 70s, which was wonderful. But uh, anyhow, sorry to go off on a big rant here, but uh, just an encouragement to the brethren out there that if you're thinking about maybe the Lord wants me to go north, maybe I'd feel a little bit safer. Uh, think about it, pray about it. Uh, living in the north is not a horrible thing, not at all. Uh, I remember the, the uh, Hawaii volcano thing years ago when it was going off erupting and all this other stuff and people's homes were being engulfed in lava and all this other stuff and all this heat and everything and and uh, I remember all the bad stuff happening and we we're just driving around up here let's go out go hiking or something had a real beautiful day nice temperatures and I thought but I'm sure glad I don't live down there in Hawaii and um, you know, I see the hurricanes hitting down south, and I see the tornadoes hitting down south, and and uh, we had a hurricane here means rain. You know, by the time it gets up to us where we're at, not worried about it. You say, what about big blizzards? Just that much more fun, <laughs> you know. And uh, we have big snow piles from plowing, and you know, my son he likes to sled on those piles, and he makes tunnels in them, and it's great fun. A wonderful thing. So, uh, as war approaches, um, be it civil war or some foreign country trying to invade America and or whatever, or the immigrants, you know, the sleeper cells coming and doing terrorist acts and whatever else, as that happens, um, if you're forced to leave the Southland and you're of European ancestry, um, it's a natural thing for you to want to move north. So in answer to the questions and the comments, do you think white people start moving north? Quite possible. All right, so I guess that will be it for this video. Kind of an interesting portion of scripture. I don't know if I've ever preached on that before. Not really preaching, I'm just doing a little walk and talk here, but hopefully it was a blessing to you and uh, see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.